So we finished off last video with the ability to you know play stuff, but there's some issues because there's unfettered access. Objects can be placed inside of each other, you can place them outside your plot. That's not good. We need some validators. So let's start making those. Okay, so let's imagine that this thing right here, this little box, is our plot. So Inside of the plot, you know, you can have any number of items. I'm just going to draw, like, a random shape. And every item can have, like, different sizes, which is, like, not really that good. We need to be able to tell, like, whether it's inside or out. We don't really do any complex collisions. Like, that's just too much. What you can do is you can kind of imagine a box around, si around each part. And this box is important because it narrows down the amount of things that we actually have to check for from literally everything to just... The four points at each of the corners. So these are really all we need to check. Because if all of these four points are within the plot, we're good. If any one of them is out, then we're bad. So since this sort of like project, like where we're trying to keep it within the plot, doesn't necessarily have to be like a hundred percent like dimensionally accurate, this will work for all of our objects. Now, maybe if your object is like rotated a weird way and like it technically fits within the plot, but the bounding box doesn't. Like there could be issues, but most things like where you're kind of just placing things for aesthetic reasons aren't going to need that. So this should work out fine. So like let's take a situation where you're on like the corner. It's like over here, right? So you'd be able to check like two of these points are out and you'd be able to say no. And you have to check all four points and like not just like the center point, not just whatever, because because like if you're on any one side it could lead to different issues now i guess you could check the center point but that would be less accurate and this algorithm is like pretty simple so it does not it's not that deep um so the first thing you have to do like in this whole idea is take the points all four points tra transform them from world space to local space and so that means that like you can kind of imagine a grid on whoops I'm using a new drawing tool. We're seeing how this is going. Um, so you can kind of imagine a grid here. So you have, like, this is like the origin of our of our plot. And now all we have to do is check if the absolute position on the x-axis and the z-axis, because remember, this would be x, and then this would be z. Um, because Y is up in Roblox. You have to check if the, if the X and Z values, like the absolute value since um, our plot is like symmetrical, I guess. Um, we have to check if those are within the plot. And that actually turns out pretty simple. The hardest part of getting this entire thing to work is just generating the corner points, but I have a pretty good solution that I'll show you in a second. So let's hop over to Roblox and actually implement this. Okay, let's start by going into replicated storage and creating a new module script. And we're doing this in replicated storage because oh, that's a model, not a module script. Whoops. Okay, we're doing this in replicated storage because we want both the client and server to access it because the client is going to be using this for visual feedback and the server is going to be using this for actual validation. And each of the functions are going to be pure, meaning they like they take some input, they produce some output. So there shouldn't be any issues that both things are using it. Um, so now we're going to name this placement validator. And we're going to go into it, change the name. There we go. Little typical Roblox module script action. And there's really going to be nothing special about this. There's just going to be a couple functions. So Let's start with function placement validator dot within bounds. So we're going to be implementing the algorithm I talked about just a second ago. And it'll take in a plot, which is a model. It'll take in a object size, which is a vector 3. And it'll take in a world C frame, or world CF, which is a C frame value. So what we're doing here is first off, we need to get our plot C frame and our plot size because we have to use that to check, actually check the bounds. And there's actually a really convenient function for this. So we can do plot CF, comma plot size equals plot get bounding box. 
So that works out great. So we have our bounding, we have our bounding box, which returns the C frame and the size. And so now all we have to do is convert our object C frame, which is like provided in the world CF. So this world CF is like the object C frame, like in terms of the world. And we need to convert that to a local space. So we're going to say local object CF equals plot CF to object space world CF. So we're taking our world CF, we're kind of localizing it to this plot. So we get that like local grid that I talked about before. So the center of the plot would be zero, zero, even relative to the object. And now we have to actually generate the corner points. So you could just manually generate all four corner points, but the code for that is just kind of, it's kind of bulky and like it's a lot of repetition. And although sometimes it's probably not a best practice to do what I'm about to do, I think for this case, like just visually, it works better. And it's also expandable to 3D. If you ever need to do this in 3D, you just have to add like one more parameter or one more full loop because this actually generates the corner points for us. So we're gonna say local corner points equals a blank table. And we could just manually say, okay, this first corner point is just half the object size on the Z, half the object size on the X, and it's like the bottom left. And we do bottom left, bottom right. Like we just go through that manually. But we can actually just do this using a nested for loop and some lists. So we can say for underscore comma X in, and we're going to use curly brackets here for this is a like table. We do negative one to one, do. So basically we're, we're iterating through a table that we literally just create right here. And we're going to do the same thing again for the Z. So we're going to do for underscore Z in negative one to one, do. So this for loop is going to produce negative one, negative one, 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 and then all of the other, all four of the points, because it's just going to be like the permutations of these. So it's going to be negative one, negative one, then negative one, one, then one, negative one, then one, one. And it'll just do that. And that gives us like kind of a starting point to offset our object CF to get all the corner points. So we're going to do table dot insert corner points, and we're going to insert the object CF points to world space. And then, oh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to actually press enter. Um, so we're just going to make some space here. So we're converting a point to world space. We're going to create a new vector three. Vector three dot new. This is going to be the point that we're going to convert. So it's going to be x times object size dot x divided by two. So we're getting half of the length because the object, like the object starts in the center. So we're offsetting it by x. So like if x is negative one in this case, it would go, it would be to the left. And then we're going to do zero for the y. We don't care about y. And then we're going to do z times object size dot z divided by two. So for example, negative one, one. It's going to do negative one times object size. So let's say we have a two by two object. This will go to the negative one and then negative one. So the bottom left corner of that object. And the reason we're converting this to world space, like given um, the object space, is the object could actually be like rotated and we'll, we'll implement that feature a little bit later. And that will allow us to actually like account for that no matter what the rotation is. And this is kind of meta because we're going, we're like converting this plot or we're converting this world CF to object space. And then it's like in object space, we're like converting it back to world space, which is like relative to the object. It's, it's weird. Because this world space doesn't actually go to world space. It goes back to plot space. So we have world space the object CF gets converted to plot space and we're taking this local value relative to the object in plot space and converting it back to plot space. So that's pretty cool. It's also kind of confusing because you think there's only world space and object space, but like if you convert to object space, then convert to object space again, like that's, that's a couple le levels, but you can actually do that. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to do, and, but if you don't understand that, just remember like this line here, like we could just include the vector, but like for rotations, that wouldn't work. Um, so I, I digress. So now we're going to go through the each corner in the corner points. And we're going to do, what are we going to do? We're going to say if math.abs corner.x is greater than plot size dot x divided by 2 or math.abs corner dot z 
is greater than plot size dot z divided by two. Then we're going to return false, and then otherwise at the very end we're just going to return true. So basically we're checking if any of the corners are outside of the bounds, and we're taking the absolute value because it doesn't matter, like the plot is symmetrical, so we can go either side. If its magnitude is greater than the actual size of the plot, we just say, nope, can't place it there. Otherwise, we say, sure, like you can do that. So that is this whole algorithm done. Pretty neat. Let's go try it out. So let's go into our client placer. There we go. Because... Although the most important part of this validation is for the server, for testing, it helps to have a client preview of it, which is exactly what we're going to do. So first off, we need to get like the size of our object of our preview. And so since the client really only cares about the preview, we're just going to say local size equals... Oh, and by the way, this is in render preview. So we're going to re render preview because each frame we want to change like the status. And we're going to change the color of the box outline Thing so that we, uh, you know, get nice colors on the outline. And that's like a usually a canonical indicator of if things are okay or not. So we're going to say local size equals self dot preview. Get expense size. There we go. Because we're dealing with a model and all we really care about is the size and we'll send in the other thing as well. And now we have to get our Placement validators module. Placement validators equals require replicated storage dot placement validator. Well, it's placement validator singular. There we go. Okay. So we have that. And then we're going to go down here. I'm going to say self dot preview dot. Let's, uh, let me remember what we named it. Um, is it box outline? It is box outline. Self.preview.boxoutline dot color three equals, and we're setting it equals because we're going to use like an if statement, like if else expression. That's what it's called. And we're going to say if placement validator dot within bounds, and we're going to send in the self.plot, and then we're going to send in the size, which we got earlier, and also the C frame, which we defined up here, and that will give us the result. And we're going to do then color 3 dot new, and we're just going to set this to, let's just set this like a blue. So let's just do like this blue here, maybe. Uh, that looks about right. Else, we're going to do other three dot new. We're going to do red. So if you don't know what this statement is, actually, I'm going to make this on two lines. This is really ugly. Um, this is not an if like statement. This is an if expression. So it returns the then block if like this condition is tr true. Otherwise, it returns the else block. So we say if the, if this is true, then we like return this. Otherwise, we return this. So we're just assigning it here, and that just makes it better so we don't have to use an statement. So if it's within the, within the bounds, we give it like a blue. If it's not within the bounds, we give it like red. So this should work. Let's try it out. So we're here. It's a nice little blue. And we move it right outside. It's red. So you see that? Like we have our little indicator, whether it's allowed to be placed or not. And you'll notice since we're using the kind of the corners is like I can bring it up all the way up to the corner, but anything else is bad. Anything else is bad, like both sides. So yeah, that works perfectly. Okay, so now let's move on to the next validator before we implement it on the server because the server is kind of trivial. Like the actual validators themselves are, you know, the hardest part. The actual like checks are just like if this is true, if this is true, like it really doesn't matter. So. Next, validator. And this one's going to be actually easier because all we're checking is for collisions. We're going to do placement validator dot not intersecting objects. Now, it is kind of counterintuitive that we're using a not. It, you could also do intersecting objects and just negate the output, but this is just what I decided on. 
because it's kind of it's kind of like we want it to not intersect, intersect objects and we also want it to be within bounds so the, my philosophy behind naming these is that what we want is like what we're going to name it so we don't have to like negate it in the actual like statements because i want to do to check if this and this and that and that's how we're going to check it so inside of here we're going to take the plot obviously which is going to be the model and we're going to take in the object size again and that's going to be a vector 3 and can you guess the next parameter? It's going to be the world CF, which is a C frame. Same exact parameters as the last one. So we actually can do the same thing initially get to get the object CF. So we do um, local object CF equals plot get pivot to object space world CF. Um, and now we're going to say local params, and this is going to be overlap params. Ooh, overlap params. We're not actually doing raycasts. Like, we know, you've heard me say raycast params a thousand times, but now we're doing overlap params. Pretty cool. So we're going to do params, add to filter, plot dot objects. So basically, we want to only check for intersections with the actual objects that, like, we're allowed to place if you want to check for more objects, you can also add other stuff to the filter. So, for example, if you have, like, some default things in your plot that you, you don't want be, to be able to place objects with, then you can do that. But, like, if one of your friends is just, like, standing in the corner, like, you can place a table on top of them. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, their their um, body, like, parts, like, their base parts don't really, they shouldn't really consider, like, be able to stop you from doing stuff. Especially if, you like, you have debris or, like, cars or vehicles. Like, that's fine. I mean, obviously, this is a game-by-game -game basis. But for me right now, we're going to set params.filter type equal to enum.raycastfilter type dot include. So basically, we're only going to think about the plot.objects. We can't collide with other objects. You can collide with anything else. Obviously, for you, that might change, but for me, that works great. So we're going to say local parts equals workspace get parts, part bounds in box. And we're going to send in the world CF, the object size and the params so basically we're just saying okay the c frame where we want to start is the world cf and then the object size is the actual like size of you know our object obviously and then params we just admitting that i don't know why i have this variable in my script it's kind of useless we don't use it but don't mind that <laughs> Um, you get a sneak peek into my mistake-making fallacies. And now we're going to just return the number of parts equals zero. So if the number of parts equals zero, this returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. That's just a little shortcut here. And yeah, that's basically it. So we're just checking a box based on the object size, which should work out pretty well. And since we're using C-frame here, the size, like, it'll actually rotate accordingly. You always got to think about for these sorts of things if rotations will be covered because we will eventually implement rotations. And they are, conveniently. There's a nice convenient function that just checks if the part bounds are in box, like, no touched events or whatever. Like, we don't need to deal with that. This is simple. And now, all we got to do is go back to the client placer, add a and, so if placement validator within bounds, and placement validator dot not intersecting objects. Okay, we're going to make this another line. Um, and we're going to send in the self.plot. The, um, the self. Oh, wait, no. Size. I don't know why I'm thinking. And we're going to do CF. Okay. Double check. So size CF, plot size CF. You may be wondering, why don't we like make an object placement validator and just include these things? Honestly, like whenever you can make functions pure, meaning they just take input, return output, it's probably better. So even though we repeat our parameters here, like, it's fine. It's it's not that deep. Um, so yeah, let's go test this out. We're in the game. Place blocks. And you can already see. Boom. Collision. Boom. Collision. It collides. No, this is bad. It doesn't let you place it. Well, it does let you place it because we haven't done it on the server. But there you go. That is the actual like local collision stuff. So now the only thing left to do is we go to the server and we go to the plot manager. We go to the place method. And so in the place method, we can do this after the like initial parameter check. We can say local 
object size equals object get extent size. And then we can check down here if it would actually work. So we literally just do the same thing. Like we can do if, but this, in this case, since we're doing a guard clause, so since this is like above and like we return, we got to negate it. So on the client, we do if this and this. For here, we're going to do if not placement validators. Well, we actually have to get placement validators first. Whoops. Okay. Local. Go to the top of your script and do local placement validators equals require replicated storage dot placement validator. Okay. Well, validator saying, why do I keep on doing validators? That's annoying. Okay. So if not placement validators, placement validator singular is within bounds. I'm going to send in, send in the plot and then the object size. And the world CS or world C frame in this case is the target CF. Um, and then we're going to say, or not, well, actually, let's do this on the other line. Or that is not what I wanted, bro. Okay. The then is going to go down, I guess. And we're going to do, or not placement validator dot not intersection objects plot object size targets CF. We're going to return false okay so yes this is a double negative but it also means we can have a not and a not so basically if this if this is not satisfied or this is not satisfied we return false if either one of them is bad we don't want to place it like it's bad but otherwise we just continue normally with our happy so this should work great and again we use guard clauses to save on indentation that makes it clear so after we deal with our error stuff like this is like the real deal like this is where we actually can place it so this should be a pretty simple test, like very simple. Okay, place it here. Can't place it here. Want to place it here? Nope. Want to place it here? Yep. So yeah, we now have our security, top maximum security. Again, this is for my purposes. If you want to do something else, you can obviously change your overlap params or whatever you want. Like if you have a circle plot, you can actually just check like the radius probably. Like I don't think it matters that much. It doesn't have to be that accurate. But yeah. This definitely works for my purposes. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. And sorry it took so long. I didn't schedule myself appropriately and I skipped a week. I'm, I know I missed my other weekly upload schedule. And I've been coding a lot in other languages. Like, I've been making a really big React project. So, my Roblox brain is kind of, like, not on it right now. But I hope you'll forgive me. I'll probably show uh, my side projects soon because they're pretty cool. But yeah, so stay tuned for the next video. I think the next one is um, like making like actually serialization and object saving, which is probably the most important part of the series. So stay tuned for that. I'll make sure that one's good. But other than that, I hope you have a nice day and goodbye.